this place is really something. Oh, uh, hello everyone. Well, what with the 100th podcast a few weeks ago, and then the 100th randomizer directly after that, it's been feeling like a bit of an anticlimax going back to normal. Got me feeling a little bit lost, you know? Wondering where I can go next, really. So, I've decided to take a break from it all on a rather beautiful planet. I didn't catch the name, but I found this really lovely temple. Well, I say temple, it's more like a palace, actually. It's just the place for me to gather my thoughts in silent contemplation. And I can see there's already somebody else here with the same idea. Although it looks like she's already got the only chair in the room, but oh, no matter. I'll just sit down on the steps near her and put the randomizer down as gently as possible so as not to... <laughs> Sorry. It, do you mind? I'm, I'm trying to meditate. Oh, of course, yes. Uh, you carry on. Sorry. Thank you. Oh, it's just I've got a lot on my mind, that's all. I mean, what with the... <sighs> Sorry. Look, I also have a really stressful job, okay? I, I finally have an afternoon off, and I, I just want to be by myself for a little while. Not <laughs> listening to you talk to yourself. Oh, but I'm not talking to myself. No, no, no. I'm talking to them. Who? Oh, the listeners, of course. There's nobody else here. Anyway, enough about me. What do you do now? You look vaguely familiar. Well, when I'm not here, there's a lot of space travel involved in my job. Oh, sounds important. Oh, it is. So you and I are in the same line of work, then? Mm, probably not. Hmm. Huh. Well, Marina and I, we travel all over the universe in our eagle, you know? Uh, Saving planets, battling aliens, uh, crashing... Since you're obviously going to keep talking anyway, wh why don't you tell me about this machine you've got here? Ah, well this here is the randomizer. In this is every single Jerry Anderson television episode and feature film ever made. And I travel the universe asking people to press the button to choose what I have to watch and then give comments on. And if I press the button today, will you leave? Like, <laughs> right now? Well, um, yes, if you'd uh, like. This button, is it? Um, yes. Hmm, this randomizer of yours, is it a computer? Oh, of course it is. Why, is there something wrong with it? <laughs> oh, nothing. I just that uh, I've seen more up-to-date technology in museums. Oh. Uh, well, uh, anyway, there's a little printout just come out of the slot there which will tell us what today's episode is. So if you could just... I, yeah, I, yeah, I, okay. I get the idea. Okay, let's see. Well, the show is Four Feather Falls, and the episode is Kidnapped. I, I don't know, is that good or...? Oh, that's very good, yes. Ah. Our earliest episode yet from Jerry Anderson's Puppet Western. You watch puppet shows about cowboys. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, uh, no, no, not all the time. Uh, I mean, I have to do it for this, because, you know, it's part of my job, obviously. <laughs> but uh, I, otherwise, if you're asking me... <sighs> If I watch puppet shows with cowboys on a, on a regular basis, I, 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 um, not that there's anything wrong with that, of course. Oh, no, no, not at all. I, didn't you say something about leaving? Uh, yes, yes, I did. Well, thank you ever so much, Ms. Your Majesty. Oh, no, dear, no, I'm not that important, really. <laughs> no, I meant that that's what you should be calling me. You are? As Galactic Empress. Galactic Emperor? Oh, come on, you're joking! Aren't you? Well, that depends. Are you willing to stake your life on it? Oh. Oh, no, no, of course not. I, your Majesty, I'm so sorry, I had no... Okay. Goodbye, Chris. <gasps> and you know my name... Guards! Seize this intruder and throw him out, and uh, don't forget his <sighs> random thingy. Oh, yes. Well, uh, thank you very much, Your Majesty. It's been lovely to meet you. Oh, uh, magnificent one. And I'm so sorry about all the... Hey, there's a statue of you over here. Yes, yes, I know. I had it put there when the palace was built. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Yes, goodbye. <laughs> oh, and good riddance. Okay, now maybe I can get some peace and quiet around here. <laughs> Who is Jerry Anderson, anyway? The four feathers on this hat are magic. They enable Tex Tucker's dog and horse to speak, and his guns to fire without him even touching them. And now, another exciting adventure from Four Feather Falls. 
Well, it's a four for the falls episode with a couple of firsts on the randomizer today. Firstly, thank you so much to the Galactic Empress for making the selection for us. We are not worthy, we are not worthy, we are not worthy. Thank you so much, Mom. But secondly, this is a, a bit of a pivotal episode in the, uh, not just in the uh, four for the falls as a series, but also within the uh, wider Jerry Anderson story because this episode was the very first Jerry Anderson episode produced at Slough. Uh, this is episode two of Four for the Falls, Kidnapped. Episode one had been produced at Islet Park, um, was the last Anderson production made there, was the pilot for Four for the Falls. So everything produced from then on was, uh, was over in Slough. So, um, you know, it may look, it may not look like it, but the residents of Four for the Falls have, uh, have relocated since we last saw them in the first episode. If you all know why this place is called Four Fetter Falls. Now we're getting a recap. I remember telling you how Tex Tucker, he's the sheriff around. Of the uh, events of the first episode. The Indian chief with the magic powers. And I have a feeling, uh, and I'm, hold on a second, I'm just going to grab, grab, I'm just going to check, hang on. Keep watching it. Keep watching it. I'm just Kalamakuya checking. rewarded him by giving him four magic yeah, feathers. Tex wears these feathers in his hat and is mighty proud of them. Mind you, there was a time when Big Chief Kalamakuya needed white man's magic. And it all started when Pedro got kind of short of money. And that always means trouble. Right, I'm back. Yes, uh, I had a feeling, and I've just checked I was right, uh, that this episode was, uh, although it's the second made, and seems to follow on quite closely from the first episode, it was actually one of the last to be shown, as uh, as sometimes happened with the Anderson shows. I remember the second episode of uh, Stingray, which again follows directly on from the first, was shown as like episode 34 or something. It was uh, always a bit random to broadcast order on these things. Anyway, here's... Uh, Pedro and Fernando. But who? Plotting again. Ah. What about the Doc Haggerty? They pay big money to get there. Watching a kidnapping plot. You're real smart. Ah, and here's Doc Haggerty slowly making his way down Main Street. Are you a doc around here? Well, if I'm not, a lot of people are going to be in. Oh my god. Can you come um, with me, Pronto? Right, um. So, uh... Um, oh, it's my amigo! Fernando and, and Doc are, uh, they're both on horseback, they both have horses, and, uh, it seems to be a battle between the two horses as to, as to who is the more sinister. I think I would have to say that, uh, Doc, Doc's horse easily wins. It looks like Satan has, has thoroughly set up shop inside that horse, my goodness. Again, I know it's very primitive early days, and you can pretty easy, eh? you can sort of look past these things sometimes. But that was oh, quite horrific. The expression on that horse's face, proper zombie time, I think. Hey, Tex, I wish you'd play a real tune instead of just strumming all day. Okay, boss. Now I'm not sure to what extent any Four for the Falls puppets were were rebuilt or overhauled, um, moving from Islet Park to Slough. I'm I've got a feeling it couldn't have been all of them. And I guess I'm, this is pure conjecture. I'm guessing some or some more were gradually replaced along the way. I mention this because Tex is. Uh, Mouth movements here are never let you down. Well, they're a bit clumsy and they're a bit, um, they're a bit more. I don't know if prolonged is the word I'm, I'm looking for. Why you might? I'm wondering if maybe also it might be that uh, at present the puppet has no teeth and I can't remember if he later got some. But there's something about the mouth movement during this song. As lovely as it is, because all the songs in Four for the Falls are lovely. Um, this is a bit. Only place on earth to be. Yeah, it's, it's a bit early days for this puppet. Oh, and I know that uh, some of them, like uh, Little Jake and uh, Mar Jones, were definitely overhauled following the first episode. I'm just not quite sure how far into the series that would have been. One character who's uh, absolutely perfect right out the gate, of course, is Dusty because he's just uh, he's just gorgeous. He's a lovely little doggy. 
Heaven on the range to Tex's mouth movements have completely lost sync with the dialogue there. <gasps> Meanwhile, Doc is thoroughly tied up. He's now at Pedro and Fernando's lair. Get this soon after sundown. No, Pedro. You can't keep me here. Supposing someone's sick in the town. You know. Oh, I didn't think of that. Well, off you go then. Miles. Stop it, the Doc. <laughs> You're breaking my heart. <laughs> well, it's I love the maliciousness in uh, in um, Pedro as well that Kenneth Connor brings to it. Tell me, Dusty. Even though he is a big crybaby when uh, when the chips are down. Are you right now? Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Just as if something's going to happen any minute. Oh, that means there he is. Kalamakuya. You good man. Tucker. Kalamakuya need help. What kind of help, Chief? Little Makuya. Very sick. Oh, no, not little Makuya. White man's medicine. Oh, real sorry to hear that, Chief. I'll go but get... You see, we got this thing called money, and I'm afraid it's, this health care stuff ain't cheap. But only white man's magic save Makuya. Now, I'll admit, I've I've only really seen most Four Feather Falls episode once out with it but try and speak slower Dusty. but this is an episode I have seen more than once because I think this was one of several that was on the tape trading network back in the day I, I seem to remember having this um a little bit of luck which we've already covered and first trained through of the three this is probably the one I least remember the looks of the guy he was with find white doctor Makuya very sick but the copy on DVDs isn't that great anyway so it would have looked even worse on VHS anyway Kalamakuya's gone. What was that? Oh, dramatic music. Oh, Pedro's put a, a note on the wall. Held up with a knife. Safe and well. Leave $5,000 at Redstone Pass by midnight if you want Doc back alive. He's got some very nice uh, handwriting for a, a ruthless bandit. I know who the stranger was, Dusty. Although his use of uh, capital letters could, uh, could do with some work. Come on, Dusty. We've got to move fast. Poor little Makuya. I never understood uh, with uh, with Kalamakuya and little Makuya. Takes Tucker. They are the only, uh, the only, the only tribes people around for for the fall. Come soon. Well, I delivered the note, Pedro. I think the sheriff will be on his way to Redstone Pass by now. There is only one trouble, Fernando. Can you hear those drums? I decides to go straight I'm sorry. to Redstone Pass and come up here. Hmm? But don't worry. I've got a plan. And it's as hot as my pants! It's a lovely series, but there's really only so much I can say about Four Feather Falls. Um, Not being seen. It's so lovely, it's so charming, but uh, a lot of the episodes are, are quite samey. You see one, you think, aww, oh, that's lovely. I'll leave the money. Think I'll go on ahead, Tex, and do a bit of scouting around. Oh, do we get to see your adorable walking? Yes! Oh, that adorable walking puppetry. That is so sweet. Right, the money. And he's going up to our hideout. Well, wait till he's right below. Oh, so Pedro and Fernando aren't messing around this time. They're both armed. Both going to take Tex down. Uh, shoot first, Pedro. This was my idea. I shoot first. Okay, okay. Just so long as it's not Greedo. So Dusty's heard something. Tex! I've just seen Pedro and Fernando! And a lovely over-the-shoulder shot of Tex, sitting on, on Rocky's back, looking down at Dusty. What are you trying to say? He's trying to tell you that he's just seen Fernando and Pedro. He always gets so frightfully excited. <laughs> There's only one approach to Pedro's hideout. And that's just the way we're gonna go. They'll get us for sure, Tex. We'll be like sitting ducks to them up there. Listen, Dusty. And now Rocky as a horse may not be as uh, as well articulated a, a, a puppet as, as little Dusty there. Why, if it hadn't been for... Again, the, the Kenneth Connor voice just does so much to save what, what otherwise looks like a fairly unremarkable character, but at least he's uh, nicer to look at than, than Doc's horse. God only knows where that's gone. There they are, Fernando. Already, Pedro. Anyway, Tex is a uh, good 
Bye. Approaching. Oh. Thanks, Tucker. What's going to happen? Could it be? Yep. The magic feathers have caused his gun to fire and... Aww. Uh, Dropped a rock on Pedro's head. With a shot. Thanks, Tucker. Ooh, but Pedro's still up for it. He can see a figure. Uh, uh, but it's not Tex. Can see you, Tex, Tucker. It's not Tex. Why, you double crushing. So this is a fairly simple uh, resolution to this story. My beautiful hat. Oh yeah, Petra was always worried about his hat, wasn't he? Yeah, I say resolution even though we haven't got Doc back yet, but it's fairly obvious that uh, between themselves. Pedro and Fernando's uh, role in this story has been uh, come on, Rocky. Come to a conclusion by now. The Doc. <laughs> there we are. There's Doc. Glory be. Although I noticed that they left a candle on for Doc and it's within reach of the ropes, so he might even have been able to burn his way out if he'd uh, had a mind to it. Sure, sure. Dusty. But he probably would have ended up setting himself on fire and we don't want that. That um, moustache of his, <laughs> that gorgeous moustache of his looks quite flammable. That's it, Dusty's getting him free. There, Sheriff. Yes, my magic guns created a little misunderstanding between Pedro and his friend out there. Ah. That's it, and now Doc can go over and see little Makuya. You're going to be all right now. Just as well I got here when I did. Coming, Doc? It won't be a moment, Oh, he's got that. Makuya must have that little, uh... Oh. Open rattlesnakes. I could have sworn I was in a wigwam. Yeah, the wigwam's disappeared. Here, Doc. Come on. Let's get back. So little Makuya is now cured of whatever it was that ailed him, that, uh... You know, as you get in TV, a lot of vague illnesses that never really need to be defined. And that was the second episode of Four Feather Falls Kidnapped, which was, um... It was okay, not the greatest, but uh, worth giving another look for the uh, the very first Anderson production to come out of Slough, which is quite, uh, Long to quite a, a, a... It's a statement with several connotations, actually, but... Uh, yeah, strange to think that from such little, little humble beginnings, such uh, wonderful things as, uh, as Thunderbirds and all the rest would, uh, would soon be blossoming. Um, as a Four Feather Falls an episode in its own right, not one of the greatest. I can see why I haven't remembered much about this episode, but uh, don't tell the Galactic Empress that uh, I didn't enjoy it too much because uh, I don't think she liked me very much. Oh, here she comes again. Let us go, Bye!